here is the system that's going to support the sp rotational speed measurement several ways. That's the motor. That's turning the disc. That's the power supply and the servo amplifier, a voltmeter measuring the voltage to the motor, here's the speed control. Here's the proximity detector that detects the steel rectangular bar that's rotating on the back of the aluminum disc. There's a coil, electromagnet coil, that's picking up the rotating magnetic field coming from the rotating magnets. That's the signal conditioning circuit that turns the coil voltages that look like sine waves virtually into square pulses. There's the oscilloscope showing three of the signals. The bottom signal is the signal coming from the magnet the uh, electromagnet. The middle signal are square pulses coming from 5 volt pulses coming from the uh, proximity detector and the top one is the is are the square pulses coming from the signal conditioning. This is the PLC measuring a rotation speed of 18 0.09 revolutions per second. That's the 24 volt power supply for the PLC. That's the 10 volt power supply for the proximity detector. And here are two programs running. One is LabVIEW. There's the LabVIEW program and there are the pulses being collected every second and the measured speed is 18, 17 revolutions per second. There's another program that's running simultaneously. It's an Arduino program and it's also measuring the speed at 18 revolutions per second. We have several ways of measuring the rotational speed of the disk. Our focus will be on the computer programs and the signal conditioning circuits that make all this happen. Here we have the aluminum rotating disk and a magnet that is attracted to steel. On the back of the aluminum disc is a steel, a ferrous strip, so that the magnet is attracted to the steel. I forgot to mention the tachometer. The tachometer is connected directly to the shaft of the motor. It produces a voltage directly proportional to speed. That voltage is used by the PLC to compute the motor speed. The oscilloscope can also measure speed. Proximity sensor produces two pulses every revolution. They go from 0 to 10 volts on channel 2. That's channel 2. 
That's the zero volts level on channel two, set at 10 volts per division. Therefore, the pulse peak is 10 volts, which is the input to lab view. Lab view input range is zero to 10 volts. Signal conditioning circuit produces zero to four volts on channel one. That's the zero volts level on channel one set at two volts per division. Therefore, the pulse peak is four volts. This signal is the input to the Arduino mi microcontroller. The Arduino input range limit is zero to five volts. There are the rotating magnets and the wire coil. They generate a small sine wave-like signal set at 0.2 volts per division. This signal comes from the coil and goes to the input of the signal conditioning circuit. And the output of this circuit is the square pulse to the Arduino microprocessor. The circuit diagram of the signal conditioning circuit is shown here. This un unconventional circuit produces an output signal that swings from 0 to 4 volts given the small input signal. The capacitor filters the noise spikes on the input signal. The two potentiometers adjust the experimentally determined values of negative 2.03 volts and 7.39 volts that yield the desired output of 0 to 4 volts. The computers can count rising edges easily and therefore compute the rotational speed. It would be more difficult for the computers to count sine waves. Summary of rotational speed measurements. We have a variable speed motor system. A proximity sensor. A lab view program. A tachometer. The Unitronics Vision 130 PLC. Magnetic sensor. Signal conditioning circuit an Arduino microprocessor. An oscilloscope can also measure rotational speed.